can't believe you've done this. What's going on guys, it's Psyche, and today I think it's about time we looked at a different color of builds that we usually do on this channel. Because finally, we're gonna play some green today. Now I know, it's not really a Psyche video without some kind of survival slander, and yeah, you'll be right. Um, typically, survival is my least favorite color to play in the game, however, it obviously does not mean there are no good survival builds out there. And today, to my surprise, this build that I'm about to showcase to you guys today is actually incredibly overpowered. So, at the same time, it's been a while since I've showcased a two-handed weapon, the last time around being the Scythe Claws. However, the last time I showcased a two-handed crossbow was when I showcased the explosive crossbow, which was an extremely long time ago. So I wanted to continue this streak of me showcasing two-handed weapons, so today we'll be taking a look at the repeater crossbow. Now for a lot of people, this may come down to personal preference. I know some of you like to play this weapon on tactics because it does skill with tactics as well. And I can see a lot of reasons for doing that. Namely, barbed tips is incredible because repeater crossbow fires extremely fast. But at the same time, I prefer to play my crossbows on survival simply because there's a lot more uh, synergy opportunities. For example, you got rooting synergy with wolf trap, you got synergy with mutations such as heart of ice, and just a lot of ways to get creative. And at the same time, I just wanted to make it look like I'm having a lot of variety on the channel anyways. So there we are, we're running survival today. I'm just gonna go to the Arboretum, just like I did last time. This is a ranged setup, just like the Nerves of Steel. And really no better way to kick off a run than to go to the Arboretum when you're playing ranged. It's just a very suitable biome for this kind of setup. The only thing that it struggles at is handling flying enemies, as you'll see a bit later. Um, it's definitely easier to do than the Toxic Sewer, because you don't have the explosive bats flying around. Those things can get pretty annoying. And at the same time, while you are using the repeater crossbow, you have to stay still, you can't move while you're firing it. This can sometimes affect your gameplay, but as long as you plan your moves well, it really shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, recently the 2.5 patch just came out. I'm really excited to try out the aspects. I do have one aspect showcase that I have queued up on the channel, and that is a pets only run, as I probably have mentioned this previously. I know I did suggest a bunch of builds in my 2.5 overview video, and I am interested to see what kind of crazy stuff I can come up with when utilizing some of these aspects. However, of course, just like every update in Dead Cells, this update is not without controversy. Um, I know that with the aspects, although it does not allow you to get the next boss cell, or let you get the flawless achievements, you can still get every single other achievement in the game. Which means if you're stuck at 5 BC, using an aspect pretty much makes the game trivial, and a lot of people are opposed to this. Now personally, I do think there is some degree of illegitimacy when it comes to your runs, but at the same time, this is a single player game. If you wanted to use cheats to get the achievements, then yeah, go for it. But I think the reason why some people are opposed to this is because Dead Cells is known for being a difficult game. It's known to be this unforgiving thing in the roguelike genre in the sense that there is no easy mode. So there's really no way to make the game easier other than if you use third-party programs. And to an extent, that's really what I always liked about the game. But at the same time though, you really want people to appreciate everything you've built in the game. I know a lot of people haven't even gone to the Astrolab yet, and with the help of aspects, they can actually see what it has to offer. And for those people, I am glad for them. There does seem to be a small bug that's going on in the newest patch, that for some reason loading times are really long now, especially entering the training room or entering the cavern, which I definitely have experienced. Now hopefully this is easy to fix. I've always had long loading screens when entering the cavern sometimes. I'm not sure if you guys ever experienced that. I guess cavern is just a league of its own. It's just insanely massive. However, I also have some other news to share with you guys. Now that the game is in a more balanced state, they had the rebalancing stuff with 2.4. Now they have a bunch of quality of life improvements in 2.5. I'm going to predict that there is something a lot bigger in the works behind the scenes. Now, it's fair to assume that the next update that we get from here is going to be a lot more substantial. Now, in case you guys are not aware, Motion Twin has actually started to recruit playtesters for the game, 
I personally did not sign up myself, and obviously if you do, you're not supposed to disclose any information. But just from rumors and such, all I know is that there will be something big that's coming to Dead Cells in the near future. So keep your eyes and ears open because this is going to be pretty exciting. So as we're making it through the prison depths, um, I realized that I thought survival would actually give you a lot of health to work with. But for some reason, I actually don't think I have that much health at all here. Maybe it's because it's still early in the game, but especially if you get hit by one strike from those rampagers or slashers, then a lot of your health is just gone. Luckily though, this really isn't a problem, I got some food. So we're gonna head on into the Morasso the Banished. Just like last time, I wanna face Mama Tick. And since rooting has a lot of synergy in that fight anyways, I thought this was a perfect fit. Also, I have something else I want to share with you guys. I actually had the 2.5 overview video in my uploads as a unlisted video for a pretty long time now. The reason for this is because I've always anticipated a lot of these updates that were going to come out. So for example, in 2.4, because I knew, generally speaking, um, the beta patch usually releases after a couple weeks after the alpha and then the full release a couple weeks after the beta. I made the overview video ahead of time just so I can release it as soon as the update is out. Now obviously, since it's the beta patch, I thought there might be some changes that they made in the official one. But for far as I can tell, a lot of it is still pretty accurate. Now behind the scenes, I have been playing a lot of Dead Cells as well. Um, namely testing out the aspects and unlocking the gold outfits. So what do you guys think of the gold outfits? I actually think they can look a bit better. I feel like the, the color palettes seem a little bland with just the, um, the white and the gold. It's like they just painted the color yellow on top of the original giant or timekeeper outfits. So continuing on into the biome, I'm gonna come across the curse chest rather early, which is always a plus. I've always hated the fact that I sometimes found these curse chests when I'm just nearing the end of the biome and when I have to face the boss. I think it's definitely very, very difficult to carry the curse into the boss. The only instance where I would do this in is Concierge, but then again, I don't even go to Concierge, so that's really never an issue. At this point, I'm just trying to focus on replacing my skills and weapons, because I believe the Repeater Crossbow I have right now is still the fourth rank, which is the one I got in the beginning of the game. But with the help of those 10 stats, actually never mind, 11 stats in survival, the damage is actually pretty good. And just like that, we're gonna live the curse. So after this showcase, because of how well Repeater Crossbow performed, I was thinking of doing the other two-handed weapons as well. I mean, what two-handed weapon do you guys want to see showcased? I know there is still the Ice Crossbow, there is also the Heavy Crossbow, now, the Ice Crossbow, you know, due to the general consensus, it's not that powerful. But when I test it off camera, it's actually pretty decent. I think there's something really exciting about showcasing an otherwise that's believed to be very weak weapon. For example, the War Spear, um, I know a lot of you think that it's bad because its damage was terrible before, but now the damage is actually pretty decent. Historically, there are a lot of weapons in the game that was just weak by default. But I think it's very worthwhile to at least try out some of the ones you guys never tried out before. Some of them are actually really cool by its concept. Now conceptually some of them are really cool, but a lot of them just don't have the DPS to really make it stand out. But we're gonna enter the Mama Tick fight now. Hopefully the thing that happened to me last time does not happen to me here. And as soon as I said that, of course I get hit. Basically, if you guys haven't seen the Nurse of Steel showcase, I came to Mama Tick as well, and of course, both side phases, she managed to hit me because the sides just happened to attack as soon as I was done rolling, so I couldn't refresh my roll while I'm still doing it in the corner. So a little unfortunate, I did take damage again this time around, but it's not that bad. Now thanks to the power of ranged builds, I can hit this boss even if I'm on the other side of the arena. If only there was more ranged weapons in survival. I know they have Frost Blast, I know they have Ice Bow. I've never really tried them out because Freeze really isn't that viable. But I like to see more ranged weapons in survival. Now alongside the Nerves of Steel, I think it's possible if they printed a bow that fired really slowly. And I think that would really fit into the playstyle of survival. So I think that would be pretty interesting. And also, in case you guys have not yet noticed, 
I'm doing something I've never done before, and that is going into Still Village. Now you might be wondering, well, why am I doing that? Well, part of the reason is because, again, I wanted to shake things up, and secondly, the repeater crossbow I had at this point is still extremely weak, so I wanted some way to compensate for it, and I know Sudel Village is just a nice easy biome, so I thought I might be able to coast by this rather easily. And I'm going to find yet another cursed chest in Still Village. Now I believe this one has a 10% chance of spawning. So I kind of lucked out there, but this is going to be a risk reward type of situation. I did manage to find a wolf trap, so that's going to complement this build rather well. Because Wolf Trap is one of the few things in the game that can actually root bosses. I'm just trying to show the footage of me actually traversing through the biome to find enemies to kill. And I'm going to see some elites in the distance there, which I'm just going to completely ignore. I do not want to take any chances with those things. So right now, drop my bombs, drop my Wolf Traps, and everything will be fine. Gonna find the key. I think this is the second one that I find, which will unlock the exit to the biome. And you might be wondering, well, since I'm at Still Village, where am I going to be going next? First of all, I purchased an ice armor from the vendor because I just really like ice armor. And I wanted to experiment with not running a shield. And here I'm going to find a 10th grade repeater crossbow that had a affix that allowed me to deal plus 50% more damage while I'm at full health. So let's see how far I can keep up this streak. This, I know it's a very rare affix to get, and I normally would not do this, but you know, this is a showcase run, let's try to make things more interesting. Now of course with this affix, it does not make things a lot more reliable. You still have to make an effort to kill things before they even hit you. But at the same time, because this is repeater crossbow, I thought I might be able to do this rather easily. So as soon as I fear that I'm going to get hit, I'm just going to pop ice armor. I think this is a very worthwhile strategy. Some of you don't like Ice Armor, but I would say if you actually manage to use it well, the invulnerability that it gives you is actually almost a game changer in your runs. It's possibly one of the most broken survival skills in the game. Now come to think of it, a lot of these survival items in the game actually work really well with other colors this time around, including Ice Armor. Ice Armor works extremely well in both brutality as well as tactics. Now, since I'm at Clock Tower, I'm going to fight Timekeeper. Now please keep your eyes on the screen because this is going to be worth your time. I'm sure you've all seen this in the intro, but I'm just going to pop some wolf traps, going to pop my repeater crossbow, and just like that, Timekeeper gets melted by survival. This has never happened to me before. That fight took like 7 seconds. And I even managed to do it when she was still in her first phase. I know it's definitely possible to melt a lot of the later bosses in the game, but rarely I do that with survival. I just can't think of a survival build that can actually melt like what I just did there. And speaking of unexpectedness, I'm going to do yet another thing I normally don't do, and that is going to the distillery biome. Now I know I haven't been here for a very long time in my showcase runs, so it's always a breath of fresh air. And the reasoning that I came here is because I'm running Rooted Synergy and being able to root those exploding barrels in place is the exact thing that I need in this biome because you definitely don't want them to explode first. And with my absurdly high damage output, I was able to make this a reality. The only thing I have to worry about by this point are the traps, which I'm not yet accustomed to. So I'm seeing a bunch of foreign faces here. I don't see those uh, blobs very often. I'm going to do some sick parkour here with a lot of these traps. I thought for sure I was going to get hit there. I was not yet convinced I can go through this biome unscathed. However, I'm going to do some cool maneuvers. Going to use my head and get this key. And using this barrel guy to blow up the door for me so I don't have to go get the barrel launcher. That process is always extremely annoying and it's part of the reason why I never bother to go to distillery. But finally, after taking some damage, I was able to reach the throne room. Finally come face to face with Hand of the King. So can I melt through Hand of the King the same way as I did Timekeeper? Well, let's take a look. So starting off the fight, I'm just gonna drop my wolf traps. Again, this is one of the few skills in the game that can actually root bosses. So thankfully, the damage is not that much. Part of the reason is because, of course, I lost my bonus damage because I'm not at full health. I debated about healing up right here, simply because I wanted to keep things interesting, I used the bonus damage. 
But you know, whatever, patience is a virtue. Uh, let's not do that right now. Health is just a little bit too precious for me. He's gonna summon the enemies, but come on, that's really not an issue at this point. So again, this is one of the few times I've came to the end game without a shield. The only thing that I have to compensate for it is ice armor, but I think by this point it's honestly good enough. You do have some weird hitboxes with the ground slam attacks, but as you can see, Hand of the King is down and I believe that was a no hit fight. So that's definitely gone a lot smoother than I originally anticipated. Obviously, I didn't even expect to melt through any of the bosses in the game. Especially on survival, it just doesn't happen that often. And in the no-hit door, I'm going to find a 10th grade legendary wolf trap. I might do a video where I talk about legendary items in the game. I think due to recent changes, due to how they work now, it's definitely worth looking at. I know there's a bug in the game where if you get a legendary item that can deflect projectiles, and you deflect Hand of the King's bombs, he just kind of dies instantly because legendary items, for some reason, ignores the boss damage cap. So I guess if you really wanted to cheese the game, you can do that, just reset over and over until you get one of those items. I know such items include something like the flashing fans, the wave of denial, or any shield in the game actually, and it even works with armadillo pack. Legendary items in general just feel extremely overpowered now, and I wonder if they're gonna change that. I mean, in the near future, I don't really see them rebalancing a lot of these uh, items again. So for the time being, I would say that my tier lists, at least my 2.4 tier list, will be pretty accurate for a while. I do know that I have some pretty controversial choices on my tier list, but then again, I think everybody has some of those at some point. I mean, what are you guys' controversial opinions on some of the weapons in the game? I, for one, think that the Oven Axe and the Gravestone kinda suck. I'm really not a fan of the slow, methodic playstyle where you swing things slowly and you try to get enemies to die in one hit, except with those weapons they can't actually do that. Also, speaking of which, I'm going to purchase food as well as an additional health flask just to get my health back to 100% gonna showcase my build once again as I always do and head into the collector boss fight. So speaking of which, I for one think that the survival playstyle is just at a disadvantage compared to brutality and tactics. I know the Conjunctivius's tentacles can only take a third of its health in a single swing, so it really does not matter how much damage you do in a single strike. You can literally charge up the toothpick and then when you release it, it will only do a third of the tentacles health. But this really isn't an issue for the other two colors because you're dealing smaller instances of damage in a quicker amount of time. And I think this is one of the reasons why I think the repeater crossbow is one of the most overpowered two-handed weapons in the game. If you can get the right synergies for it, namely Wolf Trap, then it can essentially melt through anything in the game. Now of course in this instance I did lose out on the full health benefits because I had some stupid mistake so unfortunately lost the no hit and as you can see the crusher is doing some work here. Essentially what the crusher is able to do is that sometimes it can interrupt enemy attacks and this includes bosses. So because it can charge up to three times the collector essentially cannot do anything right now. Now of course this isn't always reliable that's why you see me kind of stand far away just to make sure that in case it doesn't work, I am prepared for it. And just like this, we're gonna get into the final room, and this will be the last stretch of the game. And as you can see, just gonna pop down Crusher once again, and it's just going to interrupt the collector's attacks. So this extending light beam attack is what I have the most trouble with, and I think this is the main reason I bring a shield into the run. I just have a lot of trouble dodging that one when I don't have a shield. But in this case, I feel confident enough that I'm able to complete the fight without it. Gonna trap him one more time, and just like that, the collector is down, and we just finished the run with the repeater crossbow. So hopefully, as always, you guys enjoyed this run as much as I did. This was definitely a very welcoming surprise for me. I'm definitely excited to showcase more two-handed weapons in the game. So until then, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.